Hi, I'm Teresa Jansen, your host, and today we're talking about surrender. There are godly young people out there today, young adults who are just taking this world by storm and are really teaching and declaring and proclaiming God's goodness and building God's kingdom. For sure, that is happening. But in each of our lives, oftentimes, there are also children who are really struggling. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to want to talk about a few things specifically in the area of surrendering our child to the Lord during a real season of difficulty. Now, this could be anything. Um, and I've certainly experienced that with some of my adult children, seasons of rebelliousness, seasons maybe of apathy, where they've just had a hard time getting going, um, seasons of rebellion, and seasons of, um, you know, maybe even betrayal. These things do happen. And if you continue to try to fight in these seasons, you'll be fighting your child, and you'll even be fighting God. Because as much as you love your child, there is one who loves them even more, and that is God himself. For even as a mother who carried that child in her womb, um, whether you bore the child or not, you cared for that child when they were young, you raised them, you tried your very best to teach them right from wrong and the way to go and that they would find purpose. But somehow during this season of life, maybe they've hit a snag. Maybe something has happened and it's just not going at least the way you think that it should be. God himself is the one who knit that child together. Um, the, the one who put all the pieces, the personality, the um, interests, the passions, the skills, the intellect, all of those things were assembled for his good purpose. But sometimes before an individual finds that good purpose, they go through some real seasons of difficulty. Now, the temptation as a parent is to swoop in and rescue that child from every difficulty to save them from getting hurt. But oftentimes it's in the difficulty. It's in even the hurt. It's in the failure that God chooses to work. So we don't want to rob our child of that um, opportunity. Now, I do want to say one thing. Um, if your child is in a position of being hurt, especially hurt by someone else, this that's not a time to surrender. That is a time to step forward and, and say, we need to intervene here. Uh, so for sure, don't leave your child, even an adult child, in a dangerous situation. So aside from that, there are times when we just need to surrender our child to the Lord. Now, as a writer, I really do enjoy writing metaphors, and especially when I find them in the Bible. But I found one recently that is a little bit disturbing, I'm going to tell you. Uh, Jeremiah, <laughs> that gives you a hint right there, Jeremiah. Jeremiah weeped for his people, just as a parent may weep for their child. He was the brokenhearted prophet, right? And Oftentimes, a parent of an adult child going through a difficulty is also brokenhearted. So there's a lot of nuggets of um, encouragement, could I say, in Jeremiah for those of us who are brokenhearted. But Jeremiah 17 starts off with a writing metaphor. And it says, the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with a point of diamond. It is engraved on the tablet of their heart. It reminds me a little bit of another verse that talks about, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you from Psalm 119. But this says their sin is engraved with a pen of iron and a tip of a diamond is engraved on their heart. To find out what exactly that sin is, we have to go back one chapter to chapter 16. After Jeremiah delivers to Judah, all the calamity that God is going to pour out on them. God tells Jeremiah, the people are going to ask you, why is God treating us this way? Um, what have we done? And I think that's really interesting because they should know what they've done. But God even tells Jeremiah, they're going to ask you, what have we done wrong? And this is what God says they have done wrong. It starts off with the parents. 
It says, because your fathers have forsaken me, declares the Lord, and have gone after other gods and have served and worshiped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. And because you have done worse than your fathers. So this is really interesting. It's a generational thing. It began with the fathers who turned away from God and began to worship idols, um, maybe just as a way of fitting in with the neighbors. Um, who knows why they choose to, chose to worship the idols, but they chose to turn away from God and worship idols. Then the children do even worse. And that's absolutely how things still go. If the parents um, sometimes have some struggles, oftentimes that's going to be magnified among the children. Now, I'm not saying that's the case with everyone, but I know for me, I was not a perfect person as I was raising my children and I made plenty of mistakes. Now, should I be surprised if my children are making some of those same mistakes or possibly even worse mistakes? That can happen for sure. And I do have to own my part in that. So um, to continue in 16, let's see what the children have done. You have done worse than your fathers, for behold, every one of you follows his stubborn evil will, refusing to listen to me. Hmm, stubbornness? Does stubbornness sound like that grievous of a sin that God would um, even kick them out of the promised land and send them to go live among their enemies? That's exactly what was happening. That is the sin that God has written on the tablet of their heart with an iron pen and a diamond tip, the sin of stubbornness. Well, I don't know about you, but some of my children have had a streak of stubbornness from time to time. And uh, just as God deals with Judah and disciplines Judah, for the good purpose of them coming back to him and being restored in relationship. He never gives up on them, but God knows exactly what Judah needs. God knows also what your child needs, even more than you do. As much as you love your child, remember God loves them more. And you can trust God and trust to surrender to him. Another interesting thing happens in this Jeremiah in chapter 17. After God has told Jeremiah what to tell the people and what will happen, then it takes a really sharp turn and, it, uh, and God tells Jeremiah to stand in the gates and to declare to people that they should observe the Sabbath. So it says, thus says the Lord to me, go and stand in the people's gate by which the kings of Judah enter and by which they go out and in all the gates of Jerusalem and say, hear the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem who enter by these gates. Thus says the Lord, take care for the sake of your lives and do not bear a burden on the Sabbath day or bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem and do not carry a burden out of your house on the Sabbath or do any work, but keep the Sabbath day holy. So really interesting to me that God is saying their sin is stubbornness. And then here is this declaration that um, the people should keep the Sabbath. And I really thought about that. Why would God make this switch from idolatry and evil and stubborn hearts to tell them, have Jeremiah declare to them to keep the Sabbath. And, you know, I think there's a couple reasons. Part of it is, is that God wants our obedience. He wants us to trust him and surrender is all about trust. Um, I think sometimes we think if I surrender the situation to God and I'm not in control, what if something goes wrong? And then I think, Really, Teresa, you think you can manage the situation better than God? Well, reality check, girlfriend, <laughs> you know, God's got this, but it's very hard to surrender. So it's about trust and it's also about rest. 
we are not meant to carry these burdens all the time. And if you have an adult child that you're constantly bailing out of their situation or um, trying to carry their burden and your burden, you need a rest and you need to take that to Jesus. And um, so just leave your burden for a season, surrender the battle to the Lord let him fight for you. Let him love your child in the way that only he can. Your child is safe in his hands. Then God may just turn and find an opportunity to invite you back into that situation. It doesn't mean your hands off. It means that you are on your knees with your hands folded in prayer. Um, it's not that you do nothing. It's that you do the most important thing. We're going to continue talking about how to pray for your child in very many different circumstances. You are the one who knows what's going on in your life and in the life of your child. So please try to apply these situations to your exact um, circumstance and, and journal about this and write your reflections. When you read these scripture verses, ask God how this applies to you. And above all, find rest in knowing that God is the one who is responsible for the outcome of the situation. God and your child, they do have free will and they're adults. And so you cannot make these choices for them but you don't want to stand in the way either. And sometimes as parents, we're just too close. And so one prayer that I pray for my child oftentimes is that God will bring someone else into their life, someone who can speak words that they will hear that they didn't hear from me, even if it's exactly the same thing I have said. And I welcome that. I don't need the byline on my speeches. I just need that um, message to get through so that God has the opportunity to mold and to mend and restore their heart and draw them to himself. So there's no guilt in waving the white flag. You've carried the burden long enough. Bring your burden to Jesus, lay it down. It's time to pray. Father God, I do just pray for each person who's watching this video and the relationships in their life. Each is unique, just as each person is unique, but you know the circumstances, Father God. You know exactly what the child is going through and you know what this parent is going through. Lord, I just pray for um, your wisdom and guidance. I pray that you would help mom and dad to just turn loose and surrender that child into your arms and into your hands. Lord, I just pray for transformation. I pray for restoration. I pray for reformation and salvation, Lord. We give these children to you for they are truly yours. You love them and we know this so well. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Okay, so watch for more videos and when the whole book is ready, you'll, um, have some additional material that will go along with it. And for now, subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get um, notification when there are new videos posted and, um, and sign up for email and you'll get the first uh, study guide on, on surrender free in your inbox. So look in the show notes here and find the freebie and go to teresajansen.com slash surrender, teresajansen.com slash surrender. Then you can sign up for the email list and get the this first prayer guide directly in your email. It includes the devotional and the prayer guide. Hit subscribe, like the video, make sure you're getting notifications, and I'll see you next time. Drawn Onward is more than an amazing palindrome. It's a production of TeresaJansen.com.